What's up, guys? I just want to cover this real fast. This is a big part of my income. Um, you know, even if you can't donate something to help, whatever, you know, this is this is how I make my money. I, I basically is YouTube's a, a fairly good size of my income monthly. Um, you know, if if you can't donate or you don't want to, that's fine. Feel free to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. But if I kept you from spending hundreds or you know thousand dollars easy at a shop, consider me. You know what I'm saying? It takes time to make these. These videos, I love giving free information, but it also feels good to have my back scratched too. You know what I'm saying? So everything you need to know is in the link below. Uh, also in the comment section, you'll find all my information in the pinned comments. And uh, I hope I help you guys out. You can help me out. Let's get started. Letting her warm up. I went down and uh, got it legal today. And uh, yeah, I got to change the chain when I get home because it's very loose. I'm going to take it easy on the chain today. I only have a little ways to go, but I have a new chain on my shelf that I have to cut a few links off of, and then I can slap it on there. It's a 520-116, and the one I have is a 520 at 120. So i got to take three, three or four links off, and then it'll fit this bike perfectly fine. So we're going to do that. Remove most of the stickers. Got it pretty cleaned up, and uh, it is street legal now. I went ahead and re-registered it for another year. I'm going down to put gas in it, and we're going to give it a review today first review of the bike so i'm just gonna let it warm up for a sec and then we'll head on out you know once i fixed it up it became pretty clean and uh, the more i thought about it the more i was like man this bike is just better for both of us it's lighter it's easier to push around she can fit on it it's got the extended swing arm on the back and uh it's just a, a in my opinion it's just better for me and her you know I like the big bike, but it had a few of its own problems, and it was like almost an 800 pound bike, so it was very hard to push around in parking lots. It didn't have reverse. Um, so though it was very fast and fun, it was not gas efficient either. It took about eight gallons, and I only got like maybe 180 to 215 miles per tank, whereas this one, being a 250R, right, the GSX-R 250, this one gets 280 miles for four gallons of gas. So this is like, yeah double the distance you can see it's telling me it's fuel time so should be warmed up enough to take off here sounds like it came down into an idle so let me go get some gas i gotta do these photo shoots and then we'll do the review of the bike see you guys in a minute all right all right all right i'm done with all my photo shoots let's go give this thing a review it's street legal everything's good it's in my name i'm driving it daily now let's go First thing I'm going to say, I hate these mirrors. They're coming off. I'm going to change to something else. I love the display. It is incredible. It gives you more information than you need. It's easy to see in the daylight, and it's even simpler to see at night. I have to replace one clip because this clip has a slight bend in it, and then after I replace this clip, I'll slide this down, and I'll get a phone mount for here because this is garbage. This is not a good setup. It gets me by for now, but it's garbage. I also was able to install my throttle lock on here for cruise control, so we'll talk about that. The brakes on this, even though it's a single brake disc system on the front and rear, it actually is pretty phenomenal. They work really well. The suspension on this bike is extremely soft. I'm not a huge fan of the suspension on this bike. I wish it was a little bit more rugged. That's coming from somebody who rides, you know, sport bikes uh, pretty often. But, uh, so you feel a lot of the bumps on this bike. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I know people on YouTube in their reviews say these are smooth rides. They've clearly never ridden an actually smooth bike. So this is uh, bumpy compared to most of the sport bikes I've ridden on and definitely not even a comparison to a cruiser. Uh, that being said, let's get underway. I'm pleasantly happy with the power on this bike uh, since I rebuilt the front and redid everything. Looks great. These mirrors suck. They shake a lot. Um, I like the overall styling of fairing. I did put a tank protector on here because sometimes I wear stuff with zippers or have little metal stuff like this and I don't want it to chew up the tank. So that's why. This needs a chain on it. So right now I'm riding it with a very loose chain. I'm going to go home and adjust it and I have a new chain to go on but I need to cut some links out of it before I slap it on here. So I'm doing this on a bad chain. So just bear that in mind. Runs perfect. Um, I'm running 90, uh, well, 90 premium. I'm running premium in it. Let's just say that. Runs phenomenal. So I've got uh, 6.7 miles till I get back to my house. Let's take a trip. Let's go have some fun. First gear is very short on this bike. I'm not a huge fan of first gear. Uh, Sorry, let me actually turn my GPS down. That way you guys can't hear it that well. Um, but I can hear it. That's the point. That's the key. 
that is the key that I can hear it. All right, let's make this right here. I have no idea where I'm at, honestly. Oh, East Osborne Avenue. I kind of have an idea of where I'm at. I'm over by Hillsboro right now. Anyways, this bike is capable of running high RPMs all day. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan. Oh, well that was an interesting turn signal that guy used, huh? Pretty sure I'm supposed to go left here, if that's what it said. Yeah. If you let it get up there into the revs, it's got a pleasant amount of power. It'll pull pretty good, watch. You can get her up there quick if you need to jump into traffic, and I'm a 200 pound dude, so I'm not saying it's perfect, because it's not. <laughs> This is definitely an underpowered bike compared to most of your bikes, but it's a great starter platform for anybody getting into it. Looks like I'll be making a, a ride on 40th. This is something I'm adjusting to now coming off different bikes is uh, how soft the suspension is on this bike. You feel all of the bumps, even the little stuff. Uh, if you couldn't tell. And don't get me wrong, Tampa has really crappy roads, but the suspension on this bike is not good. It's something that I'm just going to have to adjust to. So, turn right on 40th Street. Deal. I don't know why it's having me go this way. That doesn't make sense. Does it? I don't know which way I'm supposed to be going. Oh well, let's just go. I'll just follow the GPS and I'll tell you when I get there. How's that for a deal? Looks like this is taking me back to Hillsboro. Chelsea. Alright, let's open her up a bit here. Shift's pretty smooth. Definitely gets up to speed quick. Oh, I see what it's doing. Okay, it is gonna drop me off on Hillsboro just way down. Way down. Let's kick this into third. That's a good pull gear. So the gears on this bike are definitely short until you get up into about four or five. However, second and third pull pretty good. They get you up to speed fast if you need to. And then fourth and fifth, if you're not high on the RPM band, fourth, fifth, and sixth, man, they're, they're not really uh, the best pull gears they work but they're not the best so this bike doesn't start to pull hard until about 6,000 rpms once you get up to six like right here and then I pull back you can see she'll scream up to speed that ah, was nice I waved overall it handles very well hits the turns very well She's got enough power for two up riding as long as your passengers around like 100 to 140 pounds um, and you yourself are like 180 to 200 pounds. It's got plenty of power to move two people up to speed quick You're just gonna have to really levy the the, the uh, RPM gauge and understand how far to pull each gear to get maximum performance and power out of the bike God damn Ugh, Back roads are just so garbage and I find that cruising at 40. I'm in six gear now This bike's top speed is 87 miles per hour It's not the fastest thing on the planet but it works. No, I don't think I need my navigation anymore. I'm pretty sure I know where I'm at. Turn off navigation. Navigation, turn off. Last time, navigation, turn off. I'm not sure why you're not turning off navigation. What is the deal with my phone? Okay, fine. I'll just turn you off then. <laughs> it's been having a problem all morning for some reason. I don't know what's going on with the touch screen. It's really starting to frustrate me. Ever since I did the new Android update, it's been really bad. Okay. We're going to pull out across here real fast. And then we're going to get all juked up in all this beautiful traffic. Okay, move, fucker. I can't see. Thank you. All right, let's go. I normally shift around 8 or 9 if I'm hammering on it to get up into traffic and if I'm cruising I'm in 5th or 6th gear so now I can go all the way to 87 miles per hour in the current gear that I'm in by the way even mounting my phone right here there is no wind getting right here so this does a great job blocking wind because this is just magnetically clipped on and it's staying there no problem no matter how fast I go oh that sucks Arr. so I think this would shift even smoother with a better uh, chain on it 
I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> the shifts are still a little clunky because there's a lot of slack in the chain right now. It's not enough to come off, but it's definitely got a lot of slack in it. But it has a very nice RPM band. It has pleasant amount of power. It's not the fastest thing on the planet. It's definitely a great starter bike, or for me, I wanted something that was gonna be a little more gas efficient for doing these photo shoots because the bike that I was riding was just huge. And as you can see, I'm taking it easy. I don't need to flow or you know, feel like I need to speed everywhere. I can just cruise and be fine. I'm already in fifth gear doing 44. So, you know, don't feel like you need to be mashing on it to keep up with traffic. This is just a fun bike to look sporty on or kind of get started on whatever or just gas efficient reasons that's what this is i spoke with the girlfriend i was like yeah you know what we're gonna go from the st 1300 down to something a little smaller the other problem i was having is i'm starting to get really bad uh charlie horses in my hands as i get older and the clutch on my big bike unfortunately was wearing out my hand in traffic really quick and that's when I realized, I'm like, okay, this bike's not gonna cut it because I get stranded in hour worth of traffic constantly moving two feet. That's in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out for an hour, moving two feet at a time. You know, I was exhausted. This has a very easy clutch. It's nice, it's simple. It doesn't put much pressure on your hand. So, you know, for a fuel injected inline twin, this is a fantastic little bike. Granted, it's being put against 300s and 400s, like the Kawasaki 400 was probably the best bike ever made for starter class. And also the CBR 300, which I've ridden both of them. They're both fantastic bikes with a fair amount of power for starter platforms. But there is room for those 250 class, and this does great. I, I, think, it's a, I think overall it's a great bike, especially a good starter platform for anybody who's just getting into motorcycles. It has a fair amount of power. Um, it shifts really smooth. The engine is smooth. I don't feel like it's vibrating my hands to death, you know, and that's because it's an inline twin. Plus, if you want to, you can, you can easily uh, play with traffic. It has enough power to mess with traffic without issue. This bike can run high RPM all day without a problem. So that's in sixth gear. If I pull back a little bit, it's got plenty of power to jump up there quick. One-handed riding feels good. You know, I, I really, it's a simple bike to work on outside of the plastics. That's the other thing I wanted to cover is that, man, when you have to really do anything to this bike though, it does require a lot of plastics tear down. You know, when I had to rebuild this entire front, I was not a happy camper. But when it comes to like stuff under the tank and the seat, really it's only a few bolts. You have access to the battery. You got access to the fuel injection system really quickly. Like if you need to do things, you can easily. But this is a bike where you have to understand your gears. If you hit too low coming out of a turn, the back tire will lock up on you if you're not on the, on the throttle already. So up bro what's up what's up you want to race <laughs> oh this bike doesn't have the power for the racing doesn't have the power for the racing i'm gonna miss it i'm gonna miss that power but as i keep telling myself every year this is my third year getting motorcycles as i keep telling myself uh, I don't need the power. Matter of fact, let's go take a nice little ride this way. I want to take you guys on a good trip, just kind of winding out and around. This is a nice scenery area here to take this bike and cruise down. <laughs> Speed bumps. <laughs> what are those? Those are for cars. They're not for bikes. So overall i'm pleasantly pleased it's my it's my second day riding this feels good i know how to get the power if i need it i know what gears to drop back to i know exactly uh how this bike is going to react now coming out of turns especially with two up riding because that's something that i do quite often now that i have my girlfriend i explained to her that this is a much smaller bike you know she wasn't 
considerably happy with me about the decision but I also told her like now's the time to sell the big bike and make the money on it and get something that's a little more gas efficient that way because I, I live an hour from her she lives an hour from me the big bike riding over there was killing me it's, it's a fair distance like getting to her place and mine it was a fair ride even on a 600 street bike I would have been getting horrible gas mileage this bike right here gets 280 miles to the tank right and that's four gallons of gas so I can go back and forth to her to me to her to me a lot easier on this bike and it's gonna be a lot more <laughs> gentle on my wallet so you know this is a great commuting platform it really is it's just a, a great overall bike it's not super fast but I'll tell you what out of all the bikes that I've seen next to the Ninja 400 this is probably the sportiest looking small uh, small CC displacement class that I actually like the look of you know these bikes weren't super expensive either brand new they were like forty five hundred dollars you know so though I got it for really cheap I got it for 500 bucks it's still a, a very you know it was it was essentially a cheap platform I think they intended to release it for more but then they dropped the CBR 300 and and then following that Kawasaki dropped the 400 and they realized that this thing just fell out of the market because 250s are kind of you know not not a lot of people seek the 250s so you can pick them up for really cheap you know they're just little nice cheap bikes to, to buy and they'll get crazy gas gas mileage and they can still travel highway speeds they have plenty of power for tooling around and just having fun you know that's 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 what these little bikes are for overall this is a great product I, I'm you know it, it sucks that it isn't at least a 300 <laughs> I did when I saw it I was like damn I didn't even know Suzuki made a GSX-R 250 that's crazy you know and so when I went to look at it and took it for a ride it was plagued with problems I had wires touching the whole front was buckled in the shifter was busted the front tire was flat like it just had a lot of problems it probably needed an oil change from the day that it left <laughs> the dealership these are the original tires on this bike I'm surprised they're still in good shape you know almost 7,000 miles on them so but it is a great bike it's not just good for the highway it's it it's good for around town cruising too I will say that if you hit the highway with this bike it's gonna be running around 9 9500 rpms cruising on the highway at 70 but when it comes to, to components for this bike you can get a clutch kit for this for like 50 bucks and it's really easy to change the clutch on this you know all the components on this are cheap and simple Ugh, but these are those bumpy roads I just don't like all these little de -de 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 all that yeah you feel all that and suspension is just too soft it just doesn't have good suspension but anyways I'm almost back to my house now I think that's a fair review would I would I buy this bike again at full price probably I, I think honestly I would if I was looking for something gas efficient I'm, I maybe would actually probably purchase a CBR 300 R first before I would get the GSX R 250 because I've ridden the 300 and it's got a lot more finesse than this does it's uh, its ability to get up to speed is a far I'll tell you what we'll run him one time I'll, I'll get my buddy with his CBR and his is a 2016 this is a 2019 we'll run his fuel injected single cylinder CBR against this inline uh, uh, parallel I'm sorry inline <laughs> it's a twin cylinder it's an inline twin um, We'll, we'll run them against each other. Sorry, my brain just fried. I was staring at those guys working on the trees and I just lost my train of thought. But uh, yeah, we'll run them against each other, gear for gear. And I'll show you that the CBR300R is much faster than this. The pullout, the, the takeoff, the top end, heck, I think his 300R can actually go to 98 miles an hour and this will only make 87 before the rev limiter kicks on. But, hey, it's a great bike. I'm not complaining 
you know i was the only one of my friends that had a large displacement bike every time i've bought a bike and I, they were feeling really i think they were feeling really left out and so i was like you know what there's just a multitude of different reasons why i should just get a smaller displacement bike so that i can ride with my friends we can all have the same problems of being angry that we can't go over 100 miles an hour you know and uh we'll just have fun we'll have fun that's that's what it is you know i'll even be slower once i throw the girlfriend on here and we start doing two up riding then this bike will be really slow <laughs> it's actually not i was pleasantly surprised by how how well it does effectively with two riders it is surprising so anyways i'm pretty much home i i hope that was a good review i hope i gave you a lot of good key pointers it's an easy bike to work on parts are cheap for it you know heck even a brand new chain for this bike is 31 dollars from nishi or partzilla or revzilla all of them have the chain for this for under 50 bucks you know it's just a super simple cheap easy bike to maintain just change your oil every 4,000 miles use semi-synthetic and you'll have a very happy machine you know and don't over rev it that's that's another big thing i you know you you guys that get these man you take them all the way to redline every gear and they're just they're simple engines man don't don't do that don't do that to these engines you know try to shift out around nine if any more than that nine five you know you just risk blowing the head on it if you're taking her all the way to the top every time so all right later